Hello, architects and developers. This week, I want to introduce you to a super cool CLI that I've discovered in the last one and a half weeks. It's a CLI that one of my colleagues here at AWS introduced me to. Thank you, Matt, if you're watching. And this is a CLI that will allow you to really quickly get started building Java-based Lambda functions. Yes, that's Java as a .NET developer. Crazy. I was so impressed by the CLI because it walks you through a really cool wizard. It gives you CDK code ready to get started and deploy your application. It has almost zero cognitive overhead to get started building with Lambda and Java on top of AWS. And if you like this content, then please hit that like button, the subscribe button, ding that little notification bell, get your stopwatch ready because in less than 10 minutes time, you're going to have Java running on Lambda. Let's go. A quick side note before we get into that, I have just launched a getting started with software architecture course on the Dome Train platform run by the brilliant Nick Chapsis. This covers the fundamentals of software architecture, agnostic of cloud or technology stack. It provides everything you need to know to get started in the world of software architecture, from gathering business requirements right down to application-specific design patterns. But for now, back to the content. Are you ready? Watch is started now. Let's get into it. So what you're going to use to build your first Java Lambda function in less than 10 minutes, remember, is the Micronaut framework. The Micronaut framework is a framework for building Java applications. And to get started with Micronaut, you need to download and install the Micronaut CLI. Of course, I will pop instructions in the description. So here we are in my CLI and I do MN dash dash version. That will give me the current version of the Micronaut CLI that I have installed. And if I look at the available commands that I can run in Micronaut, you see, I've got all these commands for creating different types of applications. Of course, Micronaut isn't just for building Lambda functions, it's for building many types of Java applications. Really, really importantly, and this is the bit that I find super, super cool, is that there's a specific command for creating AWS Lambda functions. So let's do that now, create AWS Lambda. And what I find the coolest thing about this is this little wizard that you get walked through as you set up your first application. So how do we want to build our application? Do we want to use controllers and annotations or do we want to use the more traditional Lambda style of programming? Well, let's use controller classes. Let's use an API gateway in front of our Lambda function. You, do you want to use a fat jar or do you want to generate a natively compiled binary using GraalVM? I'm going to use x86 for my Lambda architecture. Of course, you could use ARM if you wanted to. This is one of the coolest bits of the CLI is as well as generating a Micronaut project, the Lambda function code, this CLI can also generate you an AWS CDK project. Now, if you're not familiar with the CDK, the cloud development kit allows you to define your AWS resources using a programming language of your choice. You can build your Java applications using Java. Excellent. Let's enable that. We're gonna use Java and JUnit and Gradle. Let's target Java 17. And this is the second really cool feature that I really like of this CLI is that I can add additional features to my Micronaut application. So for example, if I wanted to integrate with Amazon Cognito for authentication, you can do that just by adding Amazon Cognito and that will configure everything, including the CDK project to actually create all the Cognito resources as part of the CDK. Super cool, but we don't want to do that for now. We're keeping things simple for the moment. And let's call this serverless Micronaut. That's now generated some files on my local file system. Let's open that up in IntelliJ. Okay, so here you are now in IntelliJ after generating the project and you get this really helpful readme that gives you all the prerequisites, information on how to deploy your application, things about the CDK, and of course, how to clean up afterwards. Before we do that, Let's have a look at what's been generated. So in your app folder, you see you've got the actual Micronaut application itself. You've got a controller. This uses annotation-based programming. If you're familiar with Micronaut or Spring, or even for me as a .NET developer, this is incredibly familiar and a really intuitive way of building APIs. 
Really simple API endpoint that's just going to return hello world. Of course, this is our first time doing this. Of course, it's hello world. And then you've got your application, your startup class, where actually things are going to get started. As well as the application code, of course, the CLI has also generated some CDK code. So if you go and have a look at this app stack file, this is where your actual Lambda resources are being defined. And it includes all the best practices that you would want to use if you're using Java on Lambda. It enables tiered compilation and even includes a link to the blog post explaining tiered compilation and why that's important. It configures your memory size, your log retention, which architecture to use. It even enables Lambda Snapstar. And if you're not familiar with Lambda Snapstar, I'll put a link in the description to another video I have on my channel that dives into Lambda Snapstar and the benefits of it. It configures all of that for you as well as the API itself. So now you've got everything you need to get started with Micronaut on Lambda. And all you've done is completed a wizard in a CLI. Super, super cool. Let's actually go ahead and deploy this now. So if you come back to your really helpful readme file, you see you've got the actual instructions to generate the deployable artifact. So here you've got the instructions on how to deploy it. I'm just going to copy that first command back to my terminal window, paste that in there, and this is going to go off now and actually compile my application. Now, the other thing you can do at this point, this is just going to generate your jar file, but you can actually generate an optimized jar file and I've got a really helpful command over in my notes on my Mac that can actually generate a more optimized jar file. So I'm just gonna rerun that same command. I'm not gonna use the one from the readme. I'm gonna use a slightly different one. Back to the readme file, and you can see that after I have built the files, I can then test them. I'm not gonna do that. I trust this project. And then I can run a CDK deploy command that you can see there back to my terminal window, cd into my infra directory, and then I'm going to run cdk deploy, and I need to pass in a profile so that it uses the correct credentials from my dev machine. That's going to synthesize the cdk project and start a cloud formation deployment, which is what is happening right now. The cdk will ask you to confirm if you are making any IAM changes. Of course, we're creating IAM roles to allow our Lambda function to actually execute. I'm happy with that. And then this is going to go off and deploy because I'm using Lambda Snapstar. That does take a couple of minutes to deploy normally. So I'm going to cheat a little bit on this 10 minute timer, pause the video and I'll be back in just a moment. That has finished deploying now and really helpfully the CDK also outputs the actual API URL. So let's grab a copy of that URL go over to Google Chrome, and I'm actually just going to open up my developer tools so we can actually see how quickly this application responds. Drop my URL in there, hit that endpoint, and my application returns in about 1.6 seconds. That's straight off the bat, that's a cold start, and you've got hello world there. If I hit that again, of course, I'm going to get a much faster response time now if I keep hitting this over and over again because the execution environment is now warm. Stop your watches. That is Micronaut on Lambda in less than 10 minutes. Let's just go and have a look at what's actually being created. If I open up a different browser window now and just go over to the Lambda console, you can have a look at the actual function that has been created. So you'll have this Micronaut app stack Micronaut function, and you can see that everything has been configured. You've got Java 11, you've got Lambda Snapstar enabled on published versions. So everything has been configured for you. you need to put very little thought into getting started. You just build your application, deploy your application, and you are ready to go. That's Java and Lambda, less than 10 minutes. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and please subscribe. Hit that little notification bell, and I will see you all next time for more serverless application fun. Keep building.